Yu-Gi-Oh! is supposed to be a children's card game. Keyword, supposed to be. It's marketed to kids, the anime post 5Ds has clearly been targeting a younger and younger demographic. Hell, it even says on the official website, quote, the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game is designed for kids ages 6 plus. But the cold hard truth is, while the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG is made for young children, it's pretty much always been dominated by young adults, at least if you're talking competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's not some hot take or anything new. This is well known in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community and is true for every era of Yu-Gi-Oh! with maybe the exception of DM. Maybe. But what if I told you there was once a child prodigy who was destined for greatness, a brash young kid who was as bright as anyone our game has ever seen, who shattered all the preconceived notions about kids in Yu-Gi-Oh and almost ended up being the real life king of games. Introducing Austin Kuhlman, the star of our story. You might be wondering why I'm showing you a baby picture of him. To that I respond, number one, as you'll soon learn, it's actually a good representation of this entire story. Number two, he actually wasn't all that much older when this story took place. Much like a lot of duelists, Austin got into Yu-Gi-Oh! very young. In fact, he was just seven years old when his best friend got him into the game. However, don't let that baby face fool you. Austin started playing during the early years of DM, so despite his appearance, he technically qualifies as an OG of Yu-Gi-Oh! in my book. Austin's beginnings in Yu-Gi-Oh! were very humble, to put it lightly. How humble, you might ask? Well, he was basically Crow from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Austin and his friend would often go around school asking kids for their worst cards, the ones that they didn't want. While it probably wasn't going to be the backbone of a deck worth writing home about, at least it got him started and it got his Yu-Gi-Oh! collection growing. Luckily, he wouldn't have to build his entire deck and collection using this method exclusively, as shortly after, he was able to buy a copy of the legendary starter deck Kaiba. As Austin started building a collection and entering local tournaments in his second year of playing, he was admittedly really bad. He would attend locals and rack up losses left and right, but he never let that deter him from entering again, and he surely didn't let it affect his confidence, which this kid was overflowing with. It may have been because of his own personal shortcomings, but I think it could have been because of some of the major factors of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! that often benefit young adults and are a detriment for young children. Incredibly high card prices, complicated strategies and combos to constantly learn, or the ever-changing and evolving competitive metagame, which of course is affected not only by the numerous sets we get each format, but also by the forbidden and limited list. Regardless of all those hurdles, however, Austin set two goals for himself as a duelist. The goals were pretty simple in concept, but really difficult to achieve. Austin wanted to top 8 a Shonen Jump Championship, and he also wanted to top 8 the US Nationals. When Austin was in the 5th grade around 2005, he really felt he was coming into his own and that he had rounded into a competent competitive duelist. Those losses at locals were now starting to turn into wins, and he had really taken his game to the next level. It was soon after Austin started topping regionals in the Pacific Northwest near his hometown of Seattle, Washington, and he realized he might just be able to do something special. He earned his invitation to the 2006 United States Championship through the regional circuit, but in his mind, playing at nationals wasn't just going to be another fun and memorable event. He believed that he could and would ultimately end up winning it. To those who know Austin well, you already know this, but for anyone who doesn't, let me just say that even at the ripe old age of 10, Austin Kuhlman wasn't just incredibly confident as a duelist. In my book, this kid was straight up brazen. Much more on that later. While topping regionals was an excellent accomplishment, Austin knew he truly had to commit to his craft to have any hopes of turning his Nationals winning dream into a reality. To that end, he joined a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! team named Team Fusion. While adding a 10-year-old duelist to your team might sound like nothing more than a kind jester, Austin was more than qualified at this point. In fact, at the time, he was one of the top 5 ranked duelists in the entire state of Washington. Joining Team Fusion also gave Austin some much needed valuable training partners as he vigorously tested for months leading up to the US National Championship. One thing I'd like to point out, and this rather surprised me about Austin, he never gave much thought to his age and how it compared to 
everyone else around him in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! Out of then, his opponents were always older than him, he was of course the youngest member on his team, but none of that ever crossed his mind. Austin never once thought of his age as a hindrance or was intimidated by playing people twice as old as him. All he really ever focused on was how he was going to win the next duel. The night before the 2006 US Nationals, Austin was incredibly nervous more nervous than he had ever been about any tournament. This might sound strange, especially considering Austin wasn't some well-known player with a bunch of Shonen Jump tops under his belt. Don't get me wrong, in this area he was a well-respected duelist for his regional accomplishments, but nationally and in the broader sense of the Yu-Gi-Oh community, he was completely unknown. It would have been more than perfectly reasonable in his first nationals to be satisfied with topping, but as I mentioned earlier, Austin was aiming for the stars, and he was nervous because he thought that he could win. In fact, he had even started counting his chickens well before they hatched, as he had already calculated that with a nationals win, he would jump all the way to the second ranked player in Washington State. Now all he had to do was back up all that bravado. June 3rd, 2006. The day had finally arrived. In San Francisco, California, Upper Deck would be crowning a Yu-Gi-Oh! United States Champion. This was still the early stages of the GX era, and the format was all types of grindy. So if replacing flip monsters like Magician of Faith, Night Assailant, which was limited, and Dekochi were everywhere. Decks commonly ran small, but quite staunch defenders like DD Warrior Lady and Spirit Reaper as well. These monsters were great because they offered solid offensive effects, but were really Really good for defense too. Usually they either couldn't be taken down in battle at all, like Spirit Reaper, or would take an opponent's monster down with them if they did, a la DD Warrior Lady. With that said, the format's most important theme was Chaos. At the time, Chaos Sorcerer was undoubtedly the best monster in the game, with probably only Cyber Dragon being his legitimate rival. Sorcerer had great stats, was easy to summon, had an amazing plus one monster removal effect, which was made even better with Ignition Priority still being in the game at this point, and on top of it, Chaos Sorcerer also fueled the devastating and often game-ending return from the different dimension, which was unlimited. Austin entered the event with his own take on Chaos Return. He wasn't looking to reinvent the wheel, but two things definitely stood out about his build. Number one, him opting the main deck Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer. As Chaos Return was the best deck, he expected a lot of mirror matches and predicted that the card would be everywhere, so he just decided to run it himself. Kaiku was a solid 1800 attack beater who prevented your opponent's Chaos Sorcerers from hitting the field entirely, and Kaiku could also ravage your opponent's graveyard so that they wouldn't have the fuel needed to summon it even if they got rid of it. I guess on the other hand, it could fuel your opponent's return from a different dimension plays, so the card was somewhat a double-edged sword. The other key detail was Austin electing to only play a single copy of Return from a Different Dimension itself. This was a very strange decision, as Return was easily the most powerful trap of the entire format. I expect that despite its obvious power, for better or worse, Austin didn't want to be too reliant on it as a strategy. Austin cruised through day one and the Swiss stage of nationals almost completely unblemished. Without a doubt, his most notable moment came when he received a feature match in round six against a formidable duelist named Robert Lopez. Austin won the Chaos Return mirror match in a quick 2-0 fashion, but the real highlight was after the duel. Featured writer Curtis Schultz asked Austin if he had any message for Yu-Gi-Oh fans, and Austin could have given a cliched response about doing your best or how much fun he was having, but instead, he said probably one of the most brazen and unbelievable things I've ever heard. Austin replied, quote, I've waited 11 months and two weeks for this day, the day I'll let everyone know that they can see me as a national champion. Unbelievable, right? This pint-sized 11 year old, who was only two thirds of the way through Swiss, basically said, you guys can all go home because I'm gonna win this thing. All things considered and what Yu-Gi-Oh's 20 year history has taught us, that should have been the height of Austin's story, but this kid just kept winning. His amazing day one performance earned him a spot in the top eight, and those years of course there was no top 16 or top 32. Waiting on the other side for Austin was in my opinion the best player in the entire United States, Iman Ganin. 
Iman was probably the hottest player of the entire 2006 year. He was on the short list of players two of the writers picked to win the entire event. He was already a Shonen Jump champion, winning Shonen Jump Columbus just one month prior to this match, and he would go on to win another Shonen Jump just one month after this match. It goes without saying that Austin was a gigantic underdog. Despite Iman's incredible stature, Austin wasn't intimidated and was actually more excited than anything. In fact, the day before National started, Austin spotted Iman by coincidence at the venue and got pretty giddy at the thought of dueling a Shonen Jump champ. Austin challenged Iman to a duel on the spot, who replied, I only play for cards or money outside of tournaments. Austin responded by grabbing the only cash in his pockets, $2, and said, let's do this. Sadly, the duel was inconclusive because the convention center closed during the match. Before their duel in the quarterfinals, Austin was in a jovial mood. As the day two announcements were playing in the background, he smiled at Iman and said, let's play rock, paper, scissors. Iman replied, what, you mean just for fun? Yeah, I'm bored, respond Austin as he grinned. The biggest duel in his entire short life, and Austin was feeling no pressure at all. All three duels were incredibly close, but in game three, Austin managed to squeak out a win with that single copy of Return from the Different Dimension. Now, not only was Austin two wins away from being a champion, but he was also going to Worlds in Tokyo, Japan. In the semifinals, Austin faced Matt Lorenz, a well-known player who had just been acquired by the powerhouse Team Comic Odyssey. Once again, it came down to game three, and just like in the previous duel, Austin found victory in his lone copy of Return. By this point, his deck list was revealed and public knowledge. Many harshly questioned his choice to main deck only a single copy of Return, but it appeared in these duels that he only needed that one. Austin had also pretty much whiffed on his meta prediction and was way off, as he was the only person in the top eight who played Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer at all. I should point out at this time that Austin had seemingly become an overnight sensation in the Yu-Gi-Oh community because of his charisma and young age. After his semifinals win, fans started cheering his name like they were straight out of the Yu-Gi-Oh GX anime. In the finals, he faced off against the next youngest member of the top eight, Mark Garcia. Mark was the only person in the top eight to completely disregard Return from the Different Dimension entirely and opted to play an aggressive Chaos deck that main deck three copies of Royal Decree. I should note for anyone who missed my When Flip Effects Ruled the World Yu-Gi-Oh! video, this strategy would soon be refined in the Chaos Recruiter, the deck that was created to counter Chaos Return. In this match, Austin only running a single copy of Return actually benefited him, but make no mistake, Garcia was still the favorite here. His aggressive deck was tailor-made to counter Chaos Return, and had it not been for some heavy side decking from Austin, he might have been able to take home the crown. Austin came back just barely to grab victory from the jaws of defeat, and the crowd absolutely exploded. The world of Yu-Gi-Oh! now had an 11-year-old champion and its youngest superstar ever. It should go without saying, but for anyone wondering, there was no Dragon Duel circuit at this time, and that would be created for almost another decade. Austin came, saw, and conquered the best duelist in the entire United States, and there would be no asterisks, no ifs, no ands, no buts, unless you're counting the ones that got kicked. While many in the Yu-Gi-Oh community immediately started making comparisons of Austin to Yu-Gi-Oh Moto, Rebecca Hawkins was actually a much better one. Not only were they about the same age, but after Austin's big win, they both held the title of American Champion. Sadly, much like most American champions, Austin's world championship showing left a lot to be desired. He started out with a disappointing 1-2 record, and it didn't get much better from there. On the upside, he did get a free trip to the other side of the world, and his Tokyo experience was one of the biggest highlights of his young life. With a very unlikely accomplishment that could have easily cemented Austin's career, he could have kicked his feet up and rested on being a one-hit wonder, but with much more hard work and determination, he would go on to garner four more Shonen Jump slash YCS top finishes. These would include an amazing run during 5Ds, where Austin would make it to the quarterfinals with X-Sabers and Gravekeepers. Much like during GS, with these performances, Austin didn't try to reinvent the wheel, but at least he proved he could definitely master combo and control decks. 
Austin stopped playing Yu-Gi-Oh around the Zexal era in 2012, but actually that wouldn't be the end of his story. Now Austin has moved to the merchant side of things, and as you can clearly see, his mail days are a lot more eventful. The time that he used to spend testing is now a lot of the sorting cards and making sure that he keeps his customers happy. He sells cards online under his Blazing Cards brand and is in the process of opening up a full-fledged store in Los Angeles, California. Austin is starting a Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube channel and already has a Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast. Links to all of those will be in the description below and I'd like to personally thank Austin. I remember this story pretty vividly as it was a huge event during the GX era, but speaking with him really filled me in on a ton of interesting details that I used in this video. And with that, we are at the conclusion of our Yu-Gi-Oh! story. If you enjoyed the video or you learned something, give the video a thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching. <笑>そんな前気なガキが全米チャンピオンだって冗談じゃ何よ全米チャンピオンをバカにする気なの<笑>